Hi, Shauna here. Welcome to Acrylic Painting 101 Basics for Beginners. We are on to Lesson 10. This video comes in three parts. The first part is how light strikes an object and the terms that we're going to be using. The second part is changing the value of the ground and seeing how that impacts light and its reflection into the object. And the third part is the painting. Let's grab your paintbrush and let's get painting. Part one, how light falls on an object. In this video, we're looking at a four-sided object with really distinct planes. And we're gonna talk about the terminology we will use around the light. Direct light coming from the left side is hitting the front plane of this object. That's where the sun is shining. Then we have what's called indirect light that's hitting the top plane. That is where the light's coming from the sky. It's not directly from the sun, it's just the light that's bouncing around the space. On the right side plane is the shade area of the object and we have reflected light that bounces from the ground back up into the shade side. Next, the object is in the way of the light source creating a cast shadow. Notice that the shade side is darker at the top and lighter as it goes down into the reflected light area. I placed a black object in the cast shadow. I did that so that you will understand that cast shadows are rarely fully black. As a new painter, I would make my cast shadows much darker than they needed to be. The darkest part of the whole painting is here, right at that core shadow. That connects the object to the table on the shade side. This small area is an important part to paint as it makes it look like it's anchored to the ground. Part two, changing the value of the ground and how it impacts light distribution. So pay attention to the reflected light area right here. Our fabric value is 10, which is white. Our local value of our object is eight. Now we've dropped the value to seven. You can see that the reflected light is becoming a little less. And then value five, there is still some reflected light, but not a lot. And when we get to fabric value zero, which is black, it absorbs all the light. And notice how dark the right side plane is now. And you even have a completely lost edge at the bottom. Now what we're gonna do is change the rectangle to a local value five, a middle gray and we're going to go through the same process, but backwards. Our fabric value zero, completely no reflected light at all. Now, when you get to fabric value five, there is some reflected light if you're there in person, but the camera did not pick it up. Value seven, you can notice the reflected light coming in much higher amount. And now let's go to value 10, which is white. And look at how much stronger the reflected light is. See the difference between the two? Kind of amazing, isn't it? The reflected light even is brighter in there. So just a reminder of the terms that we're going to use. We have direct light, indirect light, shade, cast shadow, reflected light, and core shadow. Finally, we are on to painting our rectangular object. The first thing we're gonna do is draw. I'm using raw umber. I am standing back and looking for those points and then I step forward and I put them back. And I stand back and I check to see if they're all right. I've laid my line and I've got my front. I'm happy with those two lines. I come back and I see that that angle was gonna to be too extreme with that registration mark as high as it was. Then it looks like I'm gonna go do this line, but no, what I decide is I need to figure out where that left side plane top is. 
and then I use my baby finger to guide myself down so that I can keep the line as straight as possible. Then I'm going to come up, but again I need a registration mark that sort of says where that's supposed to be. And I stand back and I'm checking that out. The top part here is the most important registration mark to get because you can easily get your angles way too off because we know in our head that it's a square, but we're looking at this in perspective. Now I'm fussing and cleaning up the edges. You don't have to do that. We're going to paint over it. I'm not, it's just something that I do. Clean up all and tidy up the edges. Make sure that I'm happy with the angles that I have. Though you don't see that I'm standing back because of the way I edited the video, I am going back and forth an awful lot. I have a rug that is getting pretty worn out. Now let's do the registration marks. You can see I've been stepped back for the cast shadow. So I've got one and I'm going to come forward. Oh no, it needs to be a little lower when I looked at it. It needs to be a little lower. This is why I paint site size. The image next to it is exactly the same size as I'm going to paint. That is what it means to paint site size. So now I'm drawing in the cast shadow. Tidy that up because it's a thing I do. <laughs> But I'm pretty pleased with that drawing. It's not a complex drawing, but it took time to do. Now I'm going to figure out what the background value is. It could have been an 8.5, but I've decided to simplify it and just keep it to a value 8. So I'm going to put in that value 8 all the way around. What I find interesting, if you take your eyes and you look over on the image that is printed, it looks like it gets lighter at the bottom and that there's darker at the top. It's all the same value because I edited that picture so I know it's all the same value. And the same quality happens when you finish this painting. It has to do with how your eyes are seeing the values next to each other, the dark values and the light values. So we're going to go all the way through. The first round, uh, first pass, I'm not worried about whether it's perfectly covered. I know I'm going to do a second pass to cover it better, but this is just to get the values in place so that we have something to compare to. Now I'm going to go back and get rid of any ridges. I'm really looking to make sure because you can end up with ridges that will capture the light and be annoying. Now let's look at the front plane. I'm seeing it as a value 9. It's a little darker at the top but I'm not going to worry about that. We're going to do the front plane all as value 9 which is one step value lighter than the background. When you're painting this, you are more than welcome to turn your painting and keep turning your board while you're painting it. It will make it much easier when you're coming up to the edge where you're opposite to your hand. Always the right edge is a little bit more difficult to manage because I don't have my brush facing the correct way. But I didn't want to start flipping it for you guys. But you are more than welcome to do that. If I was painting this just by myself and not recording it. Now we're going to look at that value. Remember that printing always makes it darker. It would be much lighter if we saw it by our own eyes. And we're going to choose the value for the shade side as well. So that's the top one is a value six. That's what I've chosen. And if you go over to my blog, I have this all pictured out and written out so that you can just quickly see what value that I was working with. And you can see that not being able to flip the board, even just turning it on its side would make a difference.
So coming up to the left edge is easy. When you come to the right edge, it's not as easy to paint. So flip your board. So this is all value four. I don't want to go much darker than four and, and that may even be a little dark, but that's the one that I chose. So I'm going to clean up the edge using the paint, the background in the paint. And now onto the cast shadow. And this one I just chose a 3.5 or a value 3 so that it's a little bit darker than the shade side plane. We're going to come back and clean. And I'm going to continue to fuss with this because I want to make it look the best that I can make it look. Again, I can't change the board around, so I'm having to do some interesting brushwork to try and get those edges nice. Using my value eight in the background to clean up the edge and cleaning up all the way around. And I've brought in some more value nine paint. I want it to look as nice as possible. When the final painting comes out, there is a little bit of a wow on that border between the shade side and the, and the light side because I'm not flipping my board. So please flip your board. <laughs> I'm going to say that lots in this video. Now I've changed to a smaller brush so I can get that corner to look like a corner and get it more crisp. Clean up the edge with this smaller brush. We're going to come in and clean up this edge along the shade side and make that line look as crisp and clear as possible and cleaning that little bit of paint up, cleaning along the front. Bringing in a little bit of paint to get that nice crisp corner back again. So it's the push and pull of paint and lining it up and putting it on and, and uh, fixing when you've gone too far and tidying it up. And get that indirect light, the top plane done nicely and just clean up that edge with a little bit of paint. Come back into the, the shade side with that value four. Now notice I haven't put the reflected light in. That's going to be the last one of the last things I do. Turning your board will make that catching that line so much easier. Now I have let that it's dried and so it's easier to clean up that way. You'll notice I've used two values. One is a value four and the other one I'm going to soften into it is a value 
No, actually it's a value three and I'm softening in a value four so that it's, that it's darker closer to the object. And you'll notice that with your cast shadows that as it moves away, it's getting more indirect light into it. So they'll be a little bit lighter. Pull in that value eight. Now we have our direct light, we have our indirect light, we have our shade side, and we have our cast shadow in place. We're going to work on the reflected light. So I'm going to just sort of touch it a little bit here and then spread it out. And I will do that several times. I didn't want it to be super bright. I just wanted it to be a little bit. We often overdo the reflected light in the object and we make it far too bright compared to what it actually is. So I come in and I do that several times. I would rather do that three or four times, put that little bit of paint and move it around and get to where I want to be versus getting it too much too fast and then having to try and backtrack a bit. Now we're going to put in the darkest part of the painting. That is that core shadow. I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to tidy it up. So we're near the end of our painting. We've got that core shadow in. We've got the background, the direct light, the top plane, the side plane, the shade plane, the cast shadow, and there is the darkest part, the core shadow. Now I'm going to put in just a very thin, not too dark line that goes just underneath the front plane because I want it to look like it's anchored to the ground. It would be there. You can kind of see it in the picture, but if you saw it in person, you would see that there was that fine line and I'm just cleaning up the edge with a damp brush that I've dried in between. I'm thinning that line out because it is really a fine line that's just underneath the object. So I've got some of that value nine paint that I'm using. And I realized that I just need a little bit more reflected light. So a tiny bit of paint and moving it around gently and softening the edge of it. I'm not making it a huge reflected light. So I'm happy with that. And we are done. Congratulations. Thanks for watching my video. To receive the handout, you can see the link below. Please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have any comments or any questions, leave those below and I will answer them. And thanks for watching my video. We'll see you in the next art video.